Hello and welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eamon Khan, here with the one and only, the Leeds warrior, Josh Warrington, to look back at a year which hasn't gone the way he would want it, but has set up something definitely that he's targeting. A lot of boxing fans are looking to see in the new year, the rematch with Lee Wood. Firstly, Josh, how are you doing? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Um, you know, Christmas period is, is creeping up. and Well, it is Christmas Christmas period, isn't it? Um mm. Yeah, Christmas Day is, is keep creeping up and uh, just been enjoying the old, all the festivities with the family and the kids and stuff. So, yeah, all chill there. Glad you're enjoying the festive period, getting that rest in. Um, going direct into this, I want you to set the table for me in terms of how you feel about that fight with, with Lee. And also, actually, before we get into that, just your year in general where be reasons why maybe you weren't as active, but a lot of fighters like to have more than just the one fight in the year. Do you feel yeah. that, you know, it's a missed opportunity to have a couple more outings? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, uh, I don't think it's it's been, it's been my doing, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's not it's not been the, the best years. In fact, it's probably been the worst years mm. in, in terms of um, myself and uh, my career. That's really where I'm back to... to you know, January. Uh, obviously, I'm just coming off the um, off the um, Luis Alberto Lopez defeat. Um, February, I'm ringside in the spitting situation with Lara Rappens. I'm then promised that I will be the next in line to fight Lara. Um, you know, get the the, the third mat fight. Um, that goes on for some time, and I'm I'm in the gym training hard, um, expecting to hear some news, and then. Sometime in April, I think, I hear that um, Lee Wood's going to exercise his rematch clause and there's nothing I can do apart from sit at the side. So a little bit of frustration. You know, I've, I've been told that I'm going to be fighting in May time against Lara and then it doesn't come about. So it dips a little bit, but then I am told a few weeks later that I'm going to be fighting sometimes in June, which was the Sonny Edwards card. That was originally meant to be my card. Um, down in London at the Wembley uh, Arena, um, some names are mentioned, and again, I'm back in the gym training hard. I'm fit, I'm strong, um, but then it don't come about again for whatever reason. Some opponents can't be um, agreed, deals can't be finalised. Um, a few fights what I got proposed to myself, um, which some of the management team weren't happy about. Um, so then that didn't come about. Then I'm, uh, I, I hear some news that I'm going to be going to um, America. Um, this gets me really excited for September time. Um, negotiations start happening with like Riv Argus and you know the WBC uh, belt. At the time, I was ranked number one with uh, the, the WBC. Um, so that starts undergoing again. I'm back in the gym. I had a little break, a little holiday in early June, but I'm back in the gym. I'm training hard. I'm thinking, right, September America, this is absolutely fantastic. And that soon breaks down in July time. Um, and then uh, by late July, you know, the wood fight's on the cards and obviously that's my last fight. And um, and since then, I've kind of just, I've had a few weeks off of training then got back in got back training away but I'm yet to um I'm yet to get the, the deal finalised with uh with a rematch with Mr. Wood. So <laughs> not the uh, <laughs> not the most exciting of um of years and a little bit a little bit down and depressing if mm. you if you you know brutally honest it's not been the best of years just a lot of negotiation, a lot of breakdowns, a lot of um a lot of frustration, especially as I'm getting into the, the last stages of my career. It's uh it's not what you want him, to be honest with you. No, a frustrating timeline of events, and um, that leads us into the fight that did materialise with Lee Wood. A lot of people in the boxing industry very hyped for that fight, and it did turn out to be mm. a very, very good fight indeed. One yes. worth rewatching, and it was a good fight for you up until uh, Josh that it wasn't, uh, where Lee Wood managed to turn it around and get the victory there. What? How? How many times have you watched it back, and does the defeat still sting, or have you kind of made as much peace as you can with it? Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've made as much as, as much peace as I can. Um, to be fair to you, I think uh, I was very happy with my performance and I, I wasn't surprised the way it was going. Um, 
in fact, not been too cocky, but I kind of expected it to go like that, you know. Um, a lot of people prior to it making their predictions, um, talking about how good Lee is and how great form he is and blah, 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 blah. Um, and uh, they're kind of writing me off, kind of holding it as though that I'm finished and that the fight against Lopez was such a one-sided fight, even though, you know, taking out consideration the second half, looking at that fight and thinking that I've seen better days and I've been in two harder fights. So, um, you know, a lot of people were favouring Woods, but me, me, myself and my camp and those around me, you know, knew that there's plenty still left in this old dog. And, uh, yeah, it was going the way that, that, I, that I thought it would do, even easier. I thought it was going to be a more physical fight, but it was just so easy to wait. And, um, you know, I felt... I was enjoying myself in there, you know, but I was mentally strong. Um, I felt fit, I felt strong. Um, all up until round seven. Now, round seven is a is a defining round. And I think it's the fight that just changes the way everything's going, not only because of the knockdown and the stoppage, but just because of the, the, the way that I'm deducted to the point. Mm. You know, I think that's what's left the most frustration over everything. Because that leads on to me being a little bit reckless, even towards that 10 seconds where Lee catches me. You know, just go diving in willy-nilly. But I'm just, I don't know. I think I lose my I lose my train of thought, I lose my concentration, I lose my, my, my way of thinking because of that point off, you know. I, I throw a punch easily on the side of the head because of, because of him turning. And um, I'm deducted to the point and I'm warned again, if I do that again, that I'll be scolded be disqualified, which I found was massively unfair. Now, if it had made it back to the round, or the, to the end of the round, I might have got bollocking off my own fellow just to say, you know, let it go. But I never got the opportunity. Obviously, what happened with last 10 seconds, Lee catches me, I go down and then it's waved off. So, um, yeah, quite, quite frustrated about the old uh, round seven. No, I can imagine that being the case with the competitor that you are and moving forward in the aftermath, there's been a lot of back and forth between you and Josh Warren, uh, sorry, you and Lee Wood. Um, yeah. I read an article uh, heading into this interview from the BBC. They spoke to Lee Wood, and I've had the chance to speak to Lee, but Lee was said to the BBC that he no longer likes you. There was a lot of respect going <laughs> into the first fight from both of you. Uh, I wonder yeah. where you stand on, on the other side of the equation with your feelings towards Lee in the aftermath of the fight. You both have your claims to successes. Uh, but there's been a fallout in terms of where you two look at each other, it seems, at least from one end of the spectrum. Yeah, it's, um, it's I won't say frustrating, but it's uh, it's interesting to say that it, it doesn't like me. I mean, uh, you know, words have, words have been said, but it must be taking it really, must be taking it really personal. I mean, it, it's funny because he's, he's the one who's come away victorious, um, but he seems to be, the one who's taking it more personal. Um, I've seen all kinds of different quotes um, and, and things said by him and interviews about I'm um, bitter and uh, I've shown him no respect and for that reason, he don't like me and I'm a sore loser and this, that, and other. Just put a few things in, uh, into context, really. Um, yes, he did win the fight, but up until that point, um, it was getting scold let's have it right it was getting scold um you know maybe the first round was a little bit close but after that i just i seem to take off with it you know distancing control everything um it's funny because in his predictions he said i was uh i was as predictable as a as a number 40 bus or something like that um but yeah it would have one-sided fight you know while we're running away with it on the scorecards on all three judges scorecards um up until that that round seven, where you know it's, it's been, I wouldn't say it's been lucky with a punch, but in in terms of you know the referee, the referee's done him a right favor there, you know, and uh, and you know he's got Robert Green basically, um, and it's funny because in in the aftermath, I got asked, I don't even know if it was from myself or I certainly got asked in the change rooms, is Lee the hardest puncher, and I said no. 
I believe Kiko Martinez mm. is one of the hardest punches, or Mike Lindsay is one of the hardest punches I've been in with, um, just because of the, the, the maybe the shots what I, I took fighting them. I, obviously, Kiko broke my jaw when when he hit me. Um, Lee's an hard punch, but he's not the hardest. That, that, that's me just being brutally honest. Um, when he hit me, he didn't put me down with one punch, did he? You know, he buzzed me, then he hit me with, with five clean ones. Um, that's all I said, you know, answering your question or whatever this question it was. And he seems to have been really bitter and upset about that. Um, no, well, not bitter, but certainly upset. Um, and then he said, like I say, um, I'm, I've been a, I've been a, a sore loser. But, um, you know, you show a bit of respect on either side. Now, let's have it right. I've just already said that he was losing, you know, massively on scorecards. Everyone who's watched the fight has seen that he's, 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 he was losing the fight. But then the next day or so, he's, done, he's doing interviews and he's saying that it was all part of the game plan and, Ah, oh, that's fucking bollocks, man. <laughs> you can't you can't tell me that. You can't tell me that it was part of the game plan to to get your ass handed to you and, and then all of a sudden you was looking to find that one punch out of the bag because that's how big a punch you are. Uh, he definitely wasn't. You know, I'd I'd have a lot more respect for him, certainly, if he would say, you know, or if he would have said, you know what, fair kudos to Josh, it were it was um it was boxing really well. Um and uh, you know, I'm a champion, and that's so that's what I do. I, I find a way to win. But he he done his kind of like gloating, kind of like cocking it and arrogant that that was all part of the game plan. And you know, quite quite a uh, I don't know. So yeah, that arrogant kind of behaviour doesn't doesn't sit well with me. And uh, I just think that he's a knob for for behaving like that. I mean, if he wants to say that um that he don't like me, I don't I go to be fuck to be fair. I'll be honest with you. He, he's he's quick to um, say things like face to face, but doing shit like this, doing you know camera interviews, he's a different man. You know, and I understand that the other people run his social media, so that's not always him. But he'll say stuff to camera. But once we're face to face, he's a different character. So um, you know, he just needs to fucking grow up there, and uh, you know if. It, if it were that easy, then we'd have the rematch, wouldn't we? We'd be it'd be jumping for a rematch. But you notice that he's not quick to do that. He's talking about other avenues as well. He's obviously mentioned my name, but he's also mentioned other avenues. It's, I know he's mentioned Cordino. I know he's mentioned Navaretti. And it's like, oh, why is he mentioning that? You know, because if he if he moves up weight, and if he and if he loses, you know. Well, he's going to move away, but he loses to like an Everetto because, oh, I've lost to a champion. But if he loses to me, which I've, I reckon he would do if in the rematch, then it'd be, uh, it'd be, I don't know, more more hurtful for him. But he'd maybe take that, leave him more personal. I don't know. So, uh, but he's, there's a reason why he's certainly not jumping to a rematch because he knows. He knows. Yeah, the, the situation between you two, obviously, is brewing and leads to kind of talking about more talk about the rematch and more want and desire for the rematch. Um, like, like I mentioned, a lot of people have had a chat with Lee and I spoke to him a few weeks back when he was in Ireland. He said, look, in terms of bums and seats, in terms of money, in terms of filling that Nottingham stadium, you make the most sense. Um, but do you, do you feel that you will get that rematch with, like you mentioned there, the options that he's talked about that are possible outside of just you? I hope so. Listen, I hope so. Um, you know, there was a little moment when we uh, was both in the medical room with each other. And, uh, you know, I like to think that was the real lead there. And uh, and I said, let's run it back. Let's, you know, we'll go again. And he said, yeah, most definitely. Now, what he's just saying that, who knows? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, listen, it's fine that a lot, those over there in Sheffield, they know what was happening. And uh, a lot of people have since discussed it and, you know, gone back and forth. And they feel like I should have been allowed to go on just to see what would have happened. You know, if he, if I get off the stool in the eighth round and he absolutely, please, you know, goes into me nonstop, bad eyes and catches me again, then we're not here having this conversation, are we? Mm. You know? But if he comes out 
in the eighth and tries blasting me and I catch him. And then, you know, I've walked away to victorious and like, wow, well, it was just one-sided from Josh and, you know, again, we're not having this conversation, uh, but it's the unknown. It's the unknown and I think uh, a lot of debate about whether I should have been allowed to go on and the, the point deduction, um, uh, what gets people talking, just like, you know, controversial fights in the past, you know, Fortune Groves, for instance, and it, and it and it's a, it started to appeal like to the to the neutrals as well, not just not just my support and Lee's support. It's a, it, it's attracting the neutrals. So and, um, if you want to fight at a stadium, if you want to get a big stadium fight, then that's what you were. Uh, that's what you need. You need a, a fight where it gets the juices flowing. I know that you guys would lo- would have loved um, this kind of build up for the first fight, but I didn't I didn't I didn't feel like it needed it. Lee didn't feel like he needed it. Um, he certainly were more respectful throughout the first. I was very respectful, but um, you know, there's a bit more bad blood. We've instantly got history. So, um, yeah, man, let's run it back. Looking forward to 2024 and that fight specifically. I saw an interview with Boxing Social, it was with Eddie as well. You mentioned that, look, you'd want a different referee should the fight happen. Michael Alexander is someone no stranger to yourself, but do you feel... Yeah. That's something that you would push for and are in a position to push for and could get if the rematch does happen. Well, I'm, I'm hoping so. Uh, the, the thing is, obviously, because there's, there's not a title on the, or if we were to box, there won't be a title on the line. Um, normally, you would for the be sanctioned from the British border control. My my only way, uh, comment in, in, in saying that is, and there's no personal against Michael Alexander. I think um, you know he's a he's a good referee. He's one of the best that we have. Um, you know, him alongside Steve Gray, um, you know the the Marcus McDonald. They're you know three of the best referees that we have week in week out. The you know doing the big show, but sometimes they get caught up in uh, in the old situations. Um, and you know, like I say, it's a small pool. What are doing a lot of big fights. Um, you look at the the WBO fight, uh, the WBO uh, featherweight title fight a few weeks back between uh, Ramirez and uh, and, that, and that Mexican. Now both men get put put it over. Uh, the Mexican gets put over in the fourth round, and you know, arguably, he looks in a worse position than I was. I mean, his legs. He's like a, a jack in the box, up and down. <laughs> He's bouncing all over the ring, um, and the referee lets him continue. And you know, it, it battles on, battles on. It puts Ramirez down in the twelfth round, and Ramirez gets for nine. Gets for nine. You know, he's a ten count. He gets for nine. Turns round, the referee allows him to continue. Um, the Mexican goes on to you know be awarded the decision. Um. But if he would have been stopped in the fourth round, which I do believe if he would have had a British boxing board control referee, then it would have been stopped. Then he would have never been able to become champion. You know, he wouldn't have been able to um, make that history. Now, listen, I understand that the referee has got a duty of care, but this is world championship boxing. And we know what we sign up for. Now, Things to take into consideration of the last fight. I'm I'm six rounds up, probably one draw. Um, I've hardly taken a punch throughout the fight. The bell has gone on uh, at the end of the round, so I've got a full minute to recover. All these things and factors have got to be taken into consideration. I believe that if I'd have had a re- referee, for instance, from America, then I'd have been allowed to continue. You know, they'd assess me at the start of the eighth round and, you know, if I got caught again, um, I'd have gone, I'd have been able to go straight away. But again, I think that some of the referees have really a little bit, get caught up in all the build up and get caught up in with, you know, not uh, wanting to anything happen in the board and stuff like that. And, you know, the board of people going against the board in court, for instance, with other situations, just, it's just, so much fear around it so um yeah i would have liked to uh you know you see with the referees in 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 america they're a little bit more 
strict and stringent to, to, to a certain extent. And then quickly, for the rules, for instance, you know, when we're over in, in America with, um, with, with Maxi, um, hold on a second. Sorry, Matt. No worries, no problem. Yeah, when we was over there with, with, uh, with Maxi, you know, the, the, the minute clear about, like, um, illegal punches. Now, we, we, we had spoken to Michael Alexander um, on fight night. Um, he pops into our change rooms, went through the rules, and we made a thing about myself and and the head because the, the conception is that I use my head illegally, um, which is absolute bollocks because, you know, I've never had a point taken off for, for that. And said, Michael, just make sure you're watching clearly. You know, there's no intention with the head. If I go inside, you know, I'm throwing a lot of punches. If, you know, the head's clash. Just make sure you're watching. Yeah, but certainly watching. But never thought that a punch on the, the, the back of the head would be would be flagged up, you know, and um, it's like, where do you consider, you know, that, that area? You know what I mean? It's like, that's the back of the head, but the, the punchline's there, and like, you watch your back, I fucking, I put a video up with a breakdown, I that punch travels, what am I meant to do? Lee turns and hits him on like that, that part of the head. If he, if he doesn't turn, it hits him on the chin, you know, so it just, it's like we're not all following the, the, the the, the same scripts, the same rules. So it's you know one rule for one rule for one rule for another. Um, but I think like some of the referees in America, I've I've seen that like right, this is how it is, and you know, yeah. I appreciate your response there, Josh. I've just got two final questions, and I'll let you enjoy the rest of the festive period. No worries, mate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking, well, I went off on a tangent then, didn't I? Oh, no, man. no, it was, it was a good, good breakdown. <laughs> I I really appreciate it. Um, summer. It's going to be the target date because of the not on ground, the football period, as is the Premier League when it ends, which is a long time to to wait out and wait for. Would you entertain mm. anything in between, or would you be just be looking for that Lee Wood rematch? I'd probably just be looking to the Lee Wood re- rematch. You know, yeah, it's a long time, but um, you know, I don't. I think I'm at a stage of my career where I don't need to. And plus. I don't need to be having like warm ups or takeovers all that. I, you know, I can, there's yeah. enough good sparring in the gym to to do that. And plus, if you know, moving up weight to super feather, give me a chance to you know build up a little bit more and uh, be, you know get even more stronger. And uh, you know, I've been doing it long enough to know when to you know peak in and, and not peak in and keeping you know um, strength there and fitness uh, fitness levels I so yeah I just I just wait mate I just wait I've done it before in the past um, you know it seems to be I'm used to fighting every bloody six to eight months these days <laughs> so um, yeah I'd like to have a, a, a busy year next year you know the deal with Lee and then uh, I'd like to be out soon after and you know big fight big fight I just want to finish off my career with like some big a few big fights you know and like um ideally get to uh get to America, get to the stage just to experience that. I go and fucking anybody's undercard over there. <laughs> just uh, let me let me experience that and uh let's go from there. Final thing, look, it's not just your career you're invested in, you're invested in Maxi Hughes's career and Reese Mould's career. Maxi didn't get the rub of the green over in America as a lot of people thought he deserved. Gary Cully as well, to, uh, sorry, Gary, in the Gary Cully fight with Reese Mould, yeah, uh, a lot of people thought Reese might have nicked that as well too. There, just your thoughts on on those two's years as well. Yeah, but it's been, it's been a frustrating year for that for that gym. That's uh, that's for sure. I mean, uh, it started off really well. Reese um, Reese had a brilliant win this year um, uh, back in February time, and thought, wow, this is this is this is fantastic. You know, we're on we're on to a good year. Then obviously Maxi um Maxi had the absolutely disgraceful decision go against him against Cambosis. Obviously, then I, I had uh, my little moment in October. And um and yeah, um Reese had uh, his fight with, with Cully, which um I thought was a close fight, but I thought Reese had done enough, but it went all against Reese as well. Yeah, it's it's, it's a little bit it's not the greatest of energies to be to be around, but we're all strong enough uh, mentally to, you know, help each other pick up and uh, and stay positive. And you know, we 
we, we can make a joke and laugh about it and um, we just get focused, get back to the gym, train hard and, you know, pick each other up and, um, you know, 2024 is another year, we'll go again. Indeed, looking forward to a prosperous 2024 for the stable and for yourself specifically with big fights on the horizon with Lee Wood. Hopefully we get to see that fight wherever it lands. Josh, pleasure is all mine. Thank you for speaking to the seconds out. Wishing you all the best. Thank you.